Hey guys, and uh, welcome to another session of the Urban Hang Suite. And uh, in today's episode, we talk we talk about uh, actually we answer a few questions. We we got a question uh, about what are some of the basic skills that you need to be good with women, no matter where you are in the world. We talk about. Um, how to learn to be sexual with women, especially if you're a virgin. And uh, we also answered another question uh, about how to take advantage of every opportunity you have uh, with women. And lastly, we talk about a personal hero of mine, Ototake Hirotada, the man with no arms and no legs but lots of ass. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Hey, this is Red Pole Q, and I am here with Mikado. And here we go. It's been it's been quite a while. It's been pretty pretty hectic over here. Uh, we re recently moved. To a new uh, apartment, and that was a big ordeal. Um, I mean, it wasn't a big ordeal; it was a big ordeal finding a place that we liked. And uh, you know, we've just gotten settled in, and uh, we've had a few wild adventures already. And uh, now that things have settled down a bit, we're uh, we're able to get back to doing what we love, which is helping guys get girls. Woo! I don't know. Are you a fan? Yeah, everyone's. A fan. <laughs> All right, unless you're uh, unless you're Jamin. <laughs> Jamin is a uh, uh, Taiwanese gay comedian uh, here in uh, in, tai in Taiwan. So um, he's not a big fan of. Well, maybe he is. I mean, I guess you know. I guess I don't know. Do do gay guys normally help other guys get laid with girls, or do they just try and convert them? Mm, probably a bit of both. Okay. Well, maybe uh, maybe I maybe you should investigate. Well, you got those beautiful blue eyes there. Well, not blue, gray, green. You know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> let's get into some of the some of the stuff. So we got a couple of questions here, uh, and then we're going to talk about a a rather famous. Uh, Japanese guy, because uh, you know his his life, um, or large parts of his life, or small parts of his life, tie in with uh, with a lot of what guys need to understand about uh, getting girls, being successful with the ladies. So, um, so the first the first question is uh, from Richard, and he says, "Hi, Red Pole Q. Uh, I signed up for the the free." e-course after I discovered Pickup Asia uh, through Kane Vast in Shanghai. If I had a private consultation, these would be my two questions. One, what are the pure fundamentals, the foundation I need to acquire for getting success with women in general, not only Asian women? And two, what are the basic sexual skills, the sex foundation I need to have when I end up in bed with a woman? I'm a virgin in his late twenties, so this is only about foundation. Okay, cool. So, uh, so let's let's kick it off with the the first question. So, he wants to know about the foundation uh, for getting success with women in general, not only Asian women. So, um, I think that you know there's there's a there's a, there's certain things that absolutely must 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 happen, and then there are other things that are really specific to what your particular goals are. So, for example, if your goal is to get a girlfriend or to get a wife, um, then your, then your uh, plan will be different than if you, your main goal is just to have sex with lots of random girls. Uh, and that would be different, again, than if your goal is to date multiple women, but um, to date multiple women and have sort of ongoing relationships with them, right? So th that will definitely uh, play a role in exactly what you would wanna uh, be doing. 
um, and uh, exactly what you need. So, but let's talk about just the basic foundations that are required for uh, everyone. So the first thing is that you will need to source women, right? I mean, that's, that's step one. You need to figure out how you're going to source women. And when I say source women, uh, I mean, you know, are you going to be meeting them online? Are you going to be meeting them through friends in your social circle? Are you going to be putting ads in Craigslist? Are you going to be approaching girls in, on the street, in cafes? Are you going to be going to clubs? Uh, are you going to uh, become a DJ so that girls meet you? Uh, you know, there, you need to figure out, you know, or some combination of those. So that's the first thing is you need to figure out what is going to be your way of sourcing women. Um, and, you know, that obviously is irrelevant what country you're in. Uh, you know, some countries, some of those work better than others, right? There are, are uh, for example, in, in, uh, in Taiwan, uh, Tinder seems to work quite well. In Korea, it seems to work a lot less well. Um, and by less well, I, that means guys seem much more reluctant to have sex with the girls they meet off of Tinder in Korea than guys seem to be about having sex with girls they meet off of Tinder in Taiwan. Now, I don't know if that says more about the girls on Tinder or more about the guys in those countries, but <laughs> in any case, um, that's one, uh, one, uh, one of one the, the first thing you need to figure out. And then each of those ways of meeting women uh, requires different skills. So then you need to acquire the skills relevant to your sourcing plan. If you are going to do online, then you need to figure out how to write a good profile. You need to be good at selecting pictures that uh, to use. You need to figure out, uh, you know, a good first message that you're going to send to uh, women so that they can, so that they are likely to respond, or the types, the right types of women are likely to respond. Um, you need to figure out how you get them from responding back and forth to meeting you for an actual date, right? So that's an example in the online world. In the offline world, if uh, you're doing, let's say, street approaches, and I'm bringing this one up not because I particularly recommend it. Actually, neither of those are what I particularly recommend, um, but I'm bringing these up because I think that they're uh, at extremes and tend to be... Yeah, and, and yeah, they're at extremes. So on the, on the other one, for street approaches, you need to figure out how to get women to talk to you. Um, you need to figure out how to you know, grab their attention quickly, how to make that interaction memorable enough in that short space of time, uh, if, if there is a short space of time, right? Because sometimes you might have, you know, 30, 40, 50 minutes or even hours with the, with the girl that you meet on the street. Or, but other times, you know, you might only have five minutes. So you need to make whatever time you have, you have to figure out how to maximize that time so that, you, uh, so that she uh, meets you again, so that you can screen for the girls that are likely to meet you again, so you can get her contact information with a high probability of meeting her again. So that's an example of the kind of skills you'd need to acquire for street approaches. And you can see that those, while they overlap somewhat, are quite different uh, from the ones you need for online. Once again, for club, that's also different, right? In a club setting, you need, uh, you, you need, to, be, uh, you need to be able to grab women's attention in an environment where they are there being social, where they're likely with other people, right? Because a day game, you know, if you approach a girl on the street, she, you can choose women that are only alone. Uh, once again, on, and so you're having a one-on-one -on -one interaction. The same goes on the internet where you have, you know, you have a one-on-one -on -one interaction. Sure, there's competition sort of in the background, there's other guys, but in the case of club, the competition is right there in the room with you. And you've got to grab her attention and you know there's so many things going on there's her friends there's other guys there's dancing and music and drinks i mean you know you could be sitting there having a perfectly wonderful conversation with a girl and then her friend shows up and goes oh my god this guy's getting a shot and then off they go to get their shots or let's go dance and then off they go to the dance floor and you're sitting there going and the girl's like oh uh, uh okay bye talk to you later even though she was fully engaged right so you have to learn how to handle all of these various uh situations and so that's the first step 
learning how to handle that first interaction. Then the, the now one of the uh, and and you can see that if you're meeting girls not online, one of the key things is you're going to have to get used to uh, uh, you're going to have to get to get used to women not being interested in it being very obvious. <laughs> you know, a lot of guys can't deal with that. They don't like the fact that a woman that they put in all this effort to go and approach her and she, you know, sneers at them or doesn't think they're very funny or tells them to go away or any of the number of ways that women decide to or try to reject a, a guy who approaches them. So in general, if you're going to be doing uh, any of the ways where you meet women in person, and, uh, and I mean in person and it's not where you're getting introductions at a house party, uh, and it's not in person like, you know, you're the DJ at the club and girls want to meet you, but if you're approaching as, you know, just a total stranger with no social value, uh, then you uh, need to develop uh, a, a, a good, what's generally called in, in, this, uh, in this world, uh, inner game. An inner game is basically how you think and feel about yourself. And this is important because you need to develop a certain resilience against the small slights that you will endure as part of the process of meeting women. Now, is it possible that you don't need to develop this? Yes, there are some guys who are attractive enough that they can essentially go out and approach girls that give them lots of signals and then they're very l unlikely to get rejected. However, usually these guys are not particularly excited about the women that they are able to get. You know, it's not surprising that as the women become more attractive, they have less incentive to be uh, friendly uh, to, to guys, or it's certainly not a lot of incentive to be making eyes at him and smiling at him or coming up and talking to him. You know, she's a hot girl. The last thing she needs is more attention. So that's, the, uh, so that's the, next, the next thing that I think you will need to develop for success with pretty much any uh, women, except like I said, for, in, for, for women in general. Although, as I pointed out, uh, for online game, this, this is not as, as harsh. So uh, that's, that's the next point. The, the third point is you're going to have to learn to run dates well, right? No matter what, whether, where, what country you're in, uh, unless you develop the skill of getting girls to come straight over to your house, which once again is possible in certain countries, it may probably be possible in any country depending on how flexible your standards are, <laughs> let's say. Uh, it, it may be possible that you could only have girls come straight to your house. Uh, but unless that's your strategy, then you're going to need to run, learn to run dates well. You're going to learn how to hold a conversation that keeps her interested, that makes her want to meet you again, that you're going to have to learn how to sexualize uh, that interaction, create sexual tension so she doesn't think of you as just friends. Um, you're going to have to learn how to initiate uh, touching if you haven't done that already in uh, the, you know, the initial meet. You're going to have to learn how to do that as part of a date. Uh, you're going to have to learn how to manage uh, a women's, uh, what's the word? I guess manage their behaviors, something like that. I, I don't know exactly if that's the right word, but you know, whenever you go on a date with a girl, she doesn't always do exactly what you want her to do. I don't know what you would call it, but anyway, you need to learn how to, how to manage her. Being able to adapt. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's good, yeah. Being able to adapt to you know, what she's giving you and how she's responding. Uh, so yeah, so, so that's very important. Telling stories, learning how to open up to her uh, and sort of create more than just a surface level interaction. Uh, how to talk about yourself in ways that are flattering uh, but not uh, bragging. Um, so yeah, so, so running, learning how to do dates well. And then the third thing that you definitely will have to learn how to do is, of course, progressing things to uh, the bedroom. And, or, yeah, and this is exactly your next question, which is, you know, so you're a virgin and you, you've never uh, had sex, you're in your late 20s, and, you know, that's a very challenging time to try and lose your virginity. And the reason is because people expect you to know what you're doing. When you're, you know, kind of in 
uh, in high school or the early college, if you're very awkward, that's not unusual. The girls in that environment are used to guys being awkward. Uh, but when you're in your late 20s, it becomes a lot more challenging. So what you need to learn to do really is you need to learn how to, um, how to escalate the touching from uh, a friendly uh, or very comfortable touching, which is you know maybe uh, touching her on the arm or it could be even holding hands depending on how well you're doing on the date, um, to you know getting more into her personal space, to initiating uh, sexual touching like whether that's kissing her on her body, uh, not, I mean, excluding, I'm not including cheeks here, I mean, you know, on the lips or neck or, or stomach or arm or, and not hand, obviously, because that's, you know, something you can do in public. But, uh, you know, if you start kissing a girl's arm, that's not something that's, that's normal. So, um, so, you know, that sort of thing. So you have to develop some skill at doing that. And normally developing that skill means uh, a good amount of trial and error. Now, you know, in, in my, uh, my sex course, I talk quite extensively about different ways to escalate sexually on, on women. Um, so, you know, and I cover that quite in depth. But the main thing is that you need to, um, you need to, to try to do various things and she will likely um, put up some level of of resistance or I guess you could say reluctance and you have to be able to work around that it's the same thing we talked about earlier um, McConnell mentioned that word adaptability and yeah you need to be adaptable you need to uh, work with what she gives you so you know the reason I brought up kissing her arm is because sometimes that's the only thing a girl might be comfortable with at a given time so that's what you do and you know maybe later she's comfortable with something else but you just never know um, so you have to be adaptable enough to sort of you know flow like water right wherever the path of least resistance um ideally the path of no resistance but you know um usually there is some level of reluctance on her part so uh and i would say that you also need to develop the skill of making girls feel comfortable being sexual with you right and this, you know, is a little bit different. What I was just talking about now is sort of about getting her turned on and getting her horny so that she wants to have sex with you. But there's, you know, that's a bodily, primarily a bodily response. We also want her to mentally feel okay about having sex with you. And so that's in an important skill to develop as well. Um, and that's, uh, that's also something I talk about in my, uh, my sex course. So uh, those are the, uh, oh right, and then there's one last uh, skill which is how to end the interaction. And I mean, when I say that, I mean, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, is this going to be an ongoing thing with this girl? Is it going to, are you trying to girlfriend her up? Uh, are you trying to not ever see her again? <laughs> um, you know, depending on which of these is your desired outcome will determine how uh, you should end things. I mean, it also has it determines how you should do things earlier on, but how you end things also will play a large role into you know whether you're an asshole or whether you're a nice, sweet guy who just isn't offering what she wants right now or is offering exactly what she wants right now. You know, so we want everyone to feel good about the interaction. Now, as a virgin, I would say that really you should just have sex with pretty much anyone that will have sex with you. Um, you know, it's very challenging to learn to be good at sexualizing, especially as I said, when you're in your late twenties, because girls are expecting you to, to be good. Um, and they're now not used to being around guys that are awkward for the most part. And if they are like young enough that they would be used to someone who's awkward, they wouldn't expect that awkwardness from you. I mean, one of the reasons they would choose an older guy, I mean, you know what I mean by older, I mean, uh, age gap older. I don't mean older like me, <laughs> but uh, age gap, then you know, they're, they're choosing you because generally they like the confidence of, a, of an older guy, the wisdom, the knowledge. And so if you're not really bringing that to the table, then it, 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 it sort of destroys their illusion of what the whole point is of dating a guy who is significantly older than them. So you, know, you need to go out there and get the experience. Uh, some people might argue that it would be valuable even if it's with a hooker. I don't know. What do you think? Um, yeah, I think it's probably it's probably valuable because it's still sexual experience, and you're you're kind of you know 
getting used to it. I yes. Guess. Yeah. I guess it's still valuable. I think that I think that, uh, that that's also kind of dangerous though because you know ultimately you're training yourself to or you want to be training yourself to have you know normal uh, a normal like sex life and a normal dating life and you know and and prostitution is like kind of an escape it's sort of like an escapism route where you know it's, it's, it's sort of like an easy an easy way to just kind of throw money at the problem um, and not actually solve the issues that you actually have so I would say just be careful be careful about that if you want to if you want to do that to kind of familiarize yourself with with sex then I think that's a, that's that's a good option there is a there was a movie that came out of few years ago uh, about it's a true story it was about this um, handicapped author who had like an iron lung and he had never had sex so he that sucks uh, he, he, <laughs> he chose to have uh, this woman who is like a sex surrogate who will like come and, and, and you know have sex with you um, to kind of familiarize you with it um, and, and, and so you know it's it's uh, it's not really prostitution in the sense that we all think about it, but it's it's, it's just a way for it was like a way for him to become familiar with sex at, at you know a really late age when he hadn't had the option to do so. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's like a pretty interesting look at, at, at that kind of approach. Um, I can't remember the movie name, but uh, we can put it in the in the comments of okay, this the podcast. But anyway, I think that yeah, I think if you want to do that to familiarize yourself, then then that's good. But but keep in mind what your end goals are and make sure to keep working towards those and not just not just take take that route as like mm. yeah I think I think from the perspective of learning the the, the, the physical mechanics of uh, of sex it, it can be valuable you know <laughs> you, you know how to put put it in the hole which is not as easy as as uh, as you would think from what you watch in the movies so you know it's not yeah it's really not as easy as as you would think so it is definitely valuable from the perspective of understanding the mechanics of, of how to put it in and all of that. However, uh, I would say outside of, of that, and you know, maybe maybe seeing a naked girl for the first time and sort of being able to see what that's really like. But beyond that, the experience with a hooker is very different from the experience with with a real girl who has anxiety and is sort of nervous about how you feel about her body and is going to be also hoping that hoping that you uh, feel good and is also going to be responsive in a very different way to you um you know physically you know generally uh a a girl a real a a real girl you you're gonna have to be uh this varies of course with the girl but in general you'll have to be more gentle with them (laughs) um and um and it's just a very the quality of the experience is quite a bit different so uh you know you have to be concerned with her enjoying herself and making her feel comfortable where you know with with a, with a hooker, you don't need to do any of that stuff. So qualitatively, it's a totally different experience. Even though you know mechanically, it can be uh, it can be the same. So as uh, McConnell just mentioned, definitely you want to be sure to uh, to keep in mind you know what your goals are and and uh, be careful not to get uh, you know addicted to the the path that the the other path of least resistance. <laughs> yeah. uh, it does happen uh, to guys, especially guys that are pretty well cashed up. Um, you know, they, they, they don't want to take the time to develop these, these skills. Okay. So, um, so I think, uh, I think that, that pretty thoroughly answers the, the question there. Uh, so thanks for that question, Richard. It was a great one. Much appreciated. Yay. Just, uh, so we can give some applause. Anyway, um, and, uh, okay, so let's move on to the next question. Uh, okay, I need help getting, this is a question from Cameron. What's up, Cameron? Yo! Um, I need help getting a girl to like me. I've known her for three or four years now, and our first encounters were, I will admit, awkward. I liked her at the time, and she says that she was nervous to talk to me, so we did not really talk when we met. Now, this is a major problem. You know, I just mentioned about how it's important to be able to be engaging with women. And this is exactly why. Because you have this opportunity to meet a girl. And, you know, if, if you don't maximize it, things can just really drag on or never go anywhere. You know, and another example, I mean, just yesterday, uh, we were talking to a girl. And she mentioned about how some guy that she met at a party three years ago 
um, contacted her and was, oh, you know, I think it'd be really nice to be with you and I think you're really great. And she's like, you met me at a party three years ago. We talked for like a little bit and now you're like seeming really interested. This is really creepy. And that's her take. Now, I don't think it's creepy. He has a guy who at one point was awkward himself. I, I don't think it's creepy. I, I can understand exactly what happened. He, he, you know, he met this girl and was like, oh, she's so beautiful. Because, I mean, this girl, I mean, this was three years ago. I mean, she must have been pretty good three years ago because she's still good now. <laughs> um, you know, I wish I'd met her three years ago. <laughs> I, was, I wish I'd met her eight years ago, nine years, ten years ago. <laughs> now we're talking. <laughs> but anyway... You know, and, and, and as a guy who, who, who has been awkward, I understand what happened. He met her, and he was like, wow, she's so good. He probably, like, you know, worked up the courage to go and talk to her at this party, and he's like, hi, my name is Pierre. What's your name? <laughs> and, you know, and then, <laughs> and then, and then you know, and then he, he, he didn't really know what to say, and, and he, you know, maybe got her Facebook or something, and then he made his escape, and he was like, wow, that didn't go terribly. And, you know, when he's been thinking about her and wanting to be with her, but he didn't know what to do, and finally, three years later, he's like, I can't take this anymore. All this time I've been thinking about it and I haven't taken action. Well, I'm fed up with myself. I'm gonna do something about it. <laughs> and here we are. Now he's finally making his play, and it's, you know, too late. I mean, if he tried back then, he might have been able to do something. She didn't have a boyfriend back then, but she has one now, and she's planning on moving in with him, and, you know, she's, she's got a whole life, you know, plan set up for the next couple of years. So, you know, you snoo... What do they say? Oh, he who hesitates, masturbates. And um, that's, that's how it is. So, so it's very... Uh, um, so I understand how you were awkward and nervous, but uh, as I was saying, that you need to... Even when you're awkward and nervous, you need to do your best to not appear to be awkward and nervous and make the most of that interaction because you may not have another opportunity. Okay. Um, the next time we met up, we talked a lot more and it has progressed over that time. I have asked her out twice and struck out twice, but now I feel like it is much different. She comes to me for advice. She flirts. I flirt when she's stressed. We talk. Um, oh, the only complication I love how, how he says this in such an understated way. The only complication is she lives in Japan and I live in the U.S. Right. Okay. We used to go to the same school in the U.S., but then she moved. I see her one or two times a year. Okay. So this is almost exactly the same situation that I mentioned uh, just now when I was talking about the girl. Right. You know, now this other guy lives in, you know, South America and she lives in Asia and she's moving to Europe. And it's like, well, you know. That practically speaking, unless someone is willing to totally rearrange their lives, there's no way that this can work out. And here we go. You had your opportunity when she was going to the same school as you, but you uh, clearly were very tentative with it, right? And, you know, this is so, so important. Um, you know, a lot of times people think of the word aggressive as being very negative. But, you know, the fact is that aggressiveness is about deciding that you want certain outcomes in your life and it's about taking massive action towards realizing those outcomes. And yeah, you know, why, is, and I think aggressiveness is scary for people because most people are not comfortable with the idea of making changes in their life. And, you know, because changes can be uh, painful, they can be dangerous because you can lose things you already have, um, they can upset people around you. I don't mean upset as in make them angry, but they can cause problems. Um, you know, you can think about how if, if, uh, if you've ever lived with someone or when you lived with in your family home, if there was ever a... Uh, an, an, an aggressive cleaning session, then, you know, it can be quite upsetting to whatever your regular daily routine is as things get moved around and whatever. So, you know, aggressiveness can be seen as, as negative. But the thing is, is that aggressiveness is about taking opportunities when they appear. 
And with, with women, this is so important. Now, you know, one of the things I think is difficult for guys to understand from, you know, watching all these romantic comedies and whatnot is, oh, and, and listening to women who tell you, oh, well, it just happened, right? Well, this is like uh, anything in life. You know, if you see a, per, a, 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 a performance in a movie and it seems so natural, the actors look so natural, that's not because they spontaneously, <laughs> spontaneously said their lines. You know, this is because of hours and hours of practice in that particular role, and it's because of years of practice previously in other roles, and outside of that in, in honing their craft. And so, you know, uh, you, you have to realize that when, when, when it looks like it just happens to you as the audience member, what you're really seeing isn't that it's just happening for the performer. What, it, what you're seeing is, so much experience that they can make it seem like it just happened. And this is the reality of successful dating as well. You need to, if you want to do well, and when I say do well, if you want to maximize your chance of getting the outcomes you want, you need to plan in advance. You need to be thinking about how are you, so here's a girl, I'm going to talk to her. Okay, how can I best make this interaction lead to another meet, right? Okay, then when you meet her, how can I best have this meeting, this date, whatever, lead to another meeting? How can I best have it lead towards uh, sex? How can I best lead towards her dating me? You know, these things that everyone, uh, many people believe just happen, it's, it's, they don't. Especially for if you are on my site, it's probably because it's not happening for you. <laughs> and I understand because it wasn't happening for me. I've got the scars to prove it. <laughs> um, so you, so so this is a, a really really uh, sad. Really, when I hear this sort of thing, oh, we used to live in the same country, but now you know she lives somewhere else, and whatever, whatever. Okay, so here we go. The last time we met was three weeks ago. It went really well and we got very close to kissing and whatnot, but never actually did. Recently, she said that she needs to focus on school and won't have as much time to text. I need help, man, thanks. Okay, wow, so you met three weeks ago. Now, it would be great to know if you met in the US or if you met her in, uh, in Japan. Um, you know, I don't know what the situation is. But I can tell you this is another great example where this was the only opportunity you had and you didn't maximize it. All right, so we see multiple opportunities here. So you said you met her the first time and it was awkward, so you didn't talk to her much. Well, that was one missed opportunity. Um, the next time we met up, we talked a lot more and it prog progressed over that time. So it sounds like this next time you met up, that just happened to happen and it was just pure luck. Because you follow up by saying, I asked her out twice and struck out twice. Now, I'm not sure what that means when you say you asked her out twice. Because, you know, I can tell you that <laughs> That's normal. I mean, you only asked her twice. She probably thinks you're not very interested. I've had girls that, when I say I've had girls, it's quite normal that I meet a girl and the first interaction goes very smoothly. And then uh, that girl won't meet me for months. For months. And she doesn't have a boyfriend. She's not married. She just doesn't feel like taking the time out of her busy, exciting life to take a chance on meeting me, right? Because, you know, even after spending, you know, 20, 30 minutes talking with uh, such a charming fellow as myself, um, you know, people have lots of other pressures in their life and meeting random guy, which is what you are, it doesn't really go very high on the priority list. Uh, I mean, you know, how many times would you say on average, I mean, for girls that are, you know, really the type of girl you're looking for on average, how many times would you say you have to ask them out before they actually agree to meet you? Mm, probably like at least three to five times. Yeah. At least. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely, that's definitely true. And, and I mean, you know, I always have this saying, I say there's always some bullshit. Um, and what that means is that no matter what, there's always something that makes it so that things are not smooth. 
right? There's always something. You, you don't know what it is, but it's never like, hey, let's meet next week on Tuesday. And the girl's like, that's great. And you say, okay, let's meet at seven. And the girl's like, sure, I'd love to. And then she just shows up at seven and you meet up and you know, you have a great time and she goes home with you and she's just like, oh wow, I'm so glad I went out with you. Can we have sex now? I really want to have sex. And then, you know what? I want to meet you again and have sex with you more and have more dates with you. <laughs> There's always some bullshit. Always. And that isn't to say there always is, but there always is. And even when there isn't, that just means it didn't show up yet. I mean, really. So, you know, twice is not, uh, you know, you, you, you can't expect to do well asking girls out only twice. So there you go. You asked her out twice. And then I guess either you, you gave up or she moved, right? Um, so then you say, now it feels a lot like a lot different. She comes to me, you for advice. She flirts, I flirt. Now, I don't know what you mean when, she's, when you say she flirts and you flirt. You know, that may mean that, uh, you know, you talk about um, going down on her on a regular basis and she's saying, wow, you can't wait for you to flick my bean. You know, I don't know if that's what you mean, then that's great. And, you know, there's no, not much ambiguity there. But if by flirt, you mean a lot of this subtle wordplay stuff, that just might be for shits and giggles on her part. And, you know, I wouldn't necessarily put a lot of stock, in, st stock, st stock, stock, S-T-O-C-K. <laughs> I wouldn't put a lot of stock in that. Um, so, you know, it, really I'm not sure exactly what you mean when you say flirt. I mean, if she's flashing her tits over Skype, I mean, now that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> then you're definitely getting somewhere. Um, okay, great. And, of course, and, and then the next time that was that you, you were able to meet her three weeks ago. Now, I once again, I don't know the circumstances under which you met her, and those would be very important to know. Uh, you know, was it that you ran into her at the supermarket or, you know, she was in town, she didn't mention it and you ran into her because that's very different than if she was like, hey, I'm going to be back in, uh, in the U.S., you know, I really want to see you when I'm there or verse, vice versa. If you said, well, you, hey, I'm going to be in Japan, why don't we meet up while I'm there? And she said, oh my God, really? I'm so happy. I can't wait to see you. You know, that, that's very different, you know, than if uh, you just happen to run into her. Now, um, so there you go. So where can you go from here? Well, I think you need to think a little bit longer term. And when I say think longer term, you're concerned that she doesn't want to text you as much. And what that says is I'm not willing to invest much from here on, right? And her reasoning is it's because of school, whatever. Now, this is not uncommon, right, in, in, among Asians. They, they really value school and, you know, they, they put it first. Um, you know, they don't get props for being social, right? I mean, no Asian parent says, you study too much, you need to go out and spend some time with your friends. I mean, this is just a concept that does not exist in Asian culture. Um, so, you know, she uh, is saying that she, she needs, so, so it could be true, but the other thing is that you're kind of concerned about it, and you probably shouldn't be unless you have some plan for how you can turn what you have into something more. So I suspect if you said, oh, I'm going to be moving to Japan, and then she probably would be more open to texting you because there is a return on the time she spends interacting with you. Right now, if she only sees you one to two times a year and that's not going to change, you know, what is the value in her interacting? Especially because she seems to not have much of an emotional investment. And when I say that, it's pretty rare for girls to have an emotional investment without having sex uh, unless it's a movie. <laughs> so, you know, um, so she has a low emotional investment in you. I'm not saying she doesn't like you, but I'm saying, you know, she's not sitting at home going, oh, why isn't he here? Oh, you know, she's probably every now and then thinks, oh, I wonder what, I wonder what Cameron is up to. And that's probably the extent of it. So um, I think you need to figure out whether there is some way where you are going to be able to create more of a relationship with her by solving your complication of uh, living in different places. And I think until you work that out, it's gonna be pretty challenging because she's not gonna see the point of moving things forward with you. Why risk getting emotionally attached to someone who isn't going to be available to her? Why not uh, find someone right where she is? Because there's certainly no uh, shortage of men in Japan. Okay, I don't know, do you have any comments? Uh, no, I 
I think everything you said is pretty much correct. I think that before you make a decision whether you're going to, if you're thinking of making some dramatic life change like moving to Japan or, um, you know, or, or something similar to that, prior to doing that, you probably want to um, give yourself more options. So in other words, you know, you probably want to at least try to go on dates with other girls to see if, if, if doing something like that makes sense. Um, you know, so give yourself a lot of options and evaluate all those options fairly and objectively, um, and then you can then you can decide. That uh, is a great point. So yeah, definitely, definitely put yourself out there more. Talk, you know, if you can talk to more girls, uh, even that if that's just through work or school or whatever you do, um, and then just you know stop stop having just pure tunnel vision on this girl because uh, she's very far away, you know. So and and, and you just don't. You just don't know if she's going to be worth the investment yet. And I think also if you do ultimately decide to move to Japan, you have to move with the thought that maybe it would never work out with this girl. And you have to be aware of, you know, if it doesn't work out, would you think that going there was a waste of your time? Now, if you like Japanese girls, really, you should just go to Japan. It's for, I mean, so, so I don't really think you can go wrong. I mean, do you think it's possible to go wrong with the idea of moving to Japan? No. <laughs> Unless you don't like Japan. Right, well. But, but if you don't like Japan, I mean, yeah. you know, come on. That is very strange. <laughs> so, 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 you know, um, but if you have some, you know, really amazing career that you would have to sacrifice, maybe under those circumstances you wouldn't want to move to Japan. But if, uh, if, if you don't have that situation then while you should consider very closely about, you know, you might move to Japan and never get her, you know, that could be the best thing that ever happened to you. Yeah, really. <laughs> you move to Japan and you don't get the girl you want, so you end up dating all these other Japanese girls. Oh, man, you're making me want to move to Japan. <laughs> okay, great. Don't worry, Japan, I'm coming at the end of July. I'm coming, I'm coming. Okay, let's just move along. <laughs> All right, so um, now this is, this is pretty interesting because just now we had these two questions from guys talking about, you know, essentially how to do well with, uh, with women. And, and I find this, uh, and so I wanted to bring up this guy who um, is, uh, is a Japanese, famous in Japan. And uh, it's, he's a great uh, role model, I guess you could say, for guys who are interested in dating. Because one of the things is that every guy has their excuse for why they don't do well with women. I'm too old, I'm too young, I'm too skinny and girls don't like skinny guys. Oh, I'm really, I'm too big and girls don't like big guys. I don't have any hair. I don't make enough money. You know, um, girls don't like me because they're intimidated because I make so much money. <laughs> um, I mean, you name it and every guy has the excuse for why he doesn't do better with women. And his excuse for why he doesn't do better is the exact thing that the other guy thinks he needs <laughs> to be, oh, well, you know, I'm really tall and girls don't, don't, and Asian girls are short. They don't like that I'm tall. Oh, I'm really short. So, I mean, it's absolutely outrageous. It's absolutely outrageous. And here we have this guy, and he's quite famous. His name is uh, his name is Hirotada Ototake, or if you're uh, speaking in Japanese, you'd call him Ototake Hirotada. Um, last name is first in Japan. And this guy um, was. Uh, let me just briefly read. He's got a Wikipedia page. Wikipedia page. So that tells you how uh, how famous he is. Um, he's a Japanese sports writer from Tokyo. And he's currently uh, 40 years old, and he was born without arms and legs. And um, he wrote a book in 1998, so that means he was uh, 24, right? I think that's the math is right, seven, eight, nine, yeah, 24, called No One's Perfect. Um, and uh, it was uh, the third best-selling book in Japan since World War II. Um, and there's a lot of bookstores in Japan, so that tells you a lot. Obviously, they're not including uh, manga. <laughs> manga, for those of you who don't know, are Japanese comics. And uh, those are far more popular than, than books. But um, anyway, so he wrote this book, No One's Perfect. Um, and it's a you know, huge bestseller, and he became quite, um, quite famous. Now, also, he went to one of the best schools in, uh, in Japan. He went to uh, Waseda, I, I guess. I'm pretty sure it was Waseda. Um, and, you know, so that's, you know, one of the top two 
uh, private universities in Japan. So clearly a very smart, hardworking guy. Um, so yeah, he's a sports journalist. And uh, you can see there's a picture uh, of him uh, on this page. If you look down, you'll see there's a picture. And he starred in a 2013 film based on the events of his own life as a teacher. So, you know, he was also a, um, uh, a, a teacher, I guess. Um, and, and so this guy was, uh, was, was being tapped by the largest party, uh, political party, in Japan, which is the uh, LDP, the Liberal Democratic Party. And they were thinking to have him run for elections in the summer of 2016. But <laughs> in, uh, in, in March of 2016, a tabloid magazine outed him. So when I, before I ex tell you, let me tell you about his family situation. So he's married uh, and he has uh, a few kids. I'm not sure exactly how many, maybe three. Oh yeah, three kids. He's married and has three kids. And uh, so first of all, look at that, a guy who's got no arms and no legs, he got himself a wife. Meanwhile, <laughs> there are lots of other guys out there who can't even get a date. <laughs> now I know you're gonna say, well, he's famous. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. So, he, um, so, so he got outed by this tabloid for having uh, affairs with five different women since the birth of his eldest son in 2008. Five different women since he was, he's a married guy. If, if, if he, even if, even if he was, a, a, if he had no disabilities at all, if he had affairs with five different women as a married man, he'd already be most married men's hero. <laughs> and then he tops it off by not even be having arms or legs. Imagine that. All right, you think that a date is awkward as you are? Imagine if you have to roll, literally you have a little wheelchair and you have to push the lever so it goes down and you've got to get this girl to agree to go with you to some place where sex can happen and she's got to do all the work. She's got to put you down on the bed. She's got to undress you. She's got to climb on top. I mean, you know, think about that. So. Here are a couple more data points because uh, I had uh, I had law student uh, do some research um, about about him so that I could talk a little bit more about his affairs. So he um, he admitted to uh, sleeping with five women, and he went to Tunisia for Christmas with one of uh, with one of the, the, the women last year. <laughs> um, he has an office, and his wife told him not to come home from the office. Uh, if he, any later than 10 p.m. So he let this uh, woman live there in his office <laughs> so that she's always available to him, I guess, after a hard day of work. And um, yes, yeah, so they have three kids and, um, and, um, and, and he apologized to, you know, publicly for his affairs. And uh, you know he was outed because they had pictures of him, you know, in Tunisia with this with this woman. I mean, I guess it's pretty easy to spot him. He's famous, and then you know, he's a guy in a wheelchair with a hot woman. I mean, you know, which isn't to say this never happens. I mean, I see this quite frequently in uh, <coughs> Thailand. <laughs> and um, yeah, so anyway, they have. Uh, let's see. Let me see. What else? Um, so they have three kids, and after the scandal was published, they were saying they would try to fix their marriage. But very recently. Um, it seems they're going to split, not because he's been sleeping around, but because after th that happened, after the scandal and the repair, trying to repair the marriage, he stayed home a lot more. And his wife got exhausted because she has to take care of the three kids and him. <laughs> you know? So basically, he was really helping out his wife by having these other women take care of him because, you know, well, they could take care of him and she could focus on the kids. And... Um, Apparently, before this scandal, he was quite n well known for being uh, very sexually. I don't know how do you try. What do you? I don't want to say perverted, but just very having a very high sex drive. Yeah, that's that's how you say it in English. Um, so he told people that he could keep fucking all day, and he had a big penis. <laughs> and. Um, 
And apparently his friend said that he could be so successful with women because everyone always wonders if he can have sex and how he does it. And he always told everyone that he was really good and that's why he could get all the girls. And a, here's a quote from a, a woman he dated. Uh, okay, so this is in Japanese, so I will translate it. So she said, uh, I, uh, I, was, I had a relationship with uh, Ototake-san. Um, maybe uh, it's hard to believe, but he is so popular with women. He is uh, very positive. He's very positive, and he is a great talker. And even now, I still, uh, and, um, I really respect him more than other people. You know, just as a human being, I really respect him. And, uh, <laughs> And, uh, and in terms of sex, well, you know, I, uh, I put him on the, I lay him down on the bed and, uh, well, something like that. <laughs> so she does all the work, I guess, you know. And, um, and it seems that he's been cheating on his wife for about eight years. And he was with this particular woman who uh, they say was in her late 20s. So this guy is 40 years old, no arms and no legs, and he's got a girl in her 20s. Do you know how many times I've heard guys who are in their late 30s or 40s telling me that they can't get these young girls? They only date women in their 30s because they're too old and they, they, young girls don't like him, like them? And um, so anyway, so he's been with this woman for four and a half years, which means that he got her in her mid or early 20s originally. Uh, and there are two other women he went on trips with, um, and he had one night with one other, with one or two others. Um, and apparently, whenever he meets girls, he always asks them out, and after dinner, he always tries to take them to a hotel or, or, or a VIP room and tries to have sex with them. Now, this is what I'm talking about, about aggressiveness. This guy is on a mission. Now, it may not be the mission that society believes you should be on, <laughs> but I certainly have massive amounts of respect, props to this guy because most people who have absolutely no problems don't work as hard as this guy. And, um, you know, as I was saying, many of you would say that, um, oh, well, you know, it's because he... Um, you know, is famous or whatever. But he's been known to be like this for a very long time. Um, and, and when I was talking to, uh, to a law student about this previously, she was saying that, you know, he, you know, couldn't masturbate because, you know, doesn't have any arms. So he pretty early on had to learn how to mac on his, uh, on his various caretakers so that they would take care of him. <laughs> So there you go. And maybe that is the secret. Maybe, um, maybe this is why everyone needs to stop masturbating. <laughs> so pretty incredible, huh? This guy. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I'd like to meet him. I'd like to, yeah, I'd like to meet him. <laughs> uh, and, and let him know that he's a real inspiration. Uh, there are any number of guys uh, who I've met. Uh, we have Quantum Leap. He's very inspirational for me because he's in his, uh, he's in his, he's in his fifties, and uh, and and you know he regularly is dating women in their twenties, and he certainly isn't rolling in money, and you know so so there's there's you know and I I regularly work with guys I and mean, you just hear so many excuses. And you can see from the picture, some of these girls aren't bad. I mean, I mean, I would, I'd be pretty, pretty happy with them. Um, have you, have you seen the, the the picture? Hold on, let me let me pull it up really quick. Uh, you'll see this picture is down below as well. So, um, hello, come on, yeah, go go internet. Especially, I guess the one in the the one of these is like his, his well, I don't know which one is the the main one, but check these women out. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. He's not slouching. This ain't Tinder, baby. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this guy's got some pretty good quality. 
he's you know 40 years old and he he's got uh, he's married and all the girls know that he's married because he's famous right and he's still killing it he's still killing it he just lays there and lets the ladies do all the work maybe we need to interview him. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> so tell us how do you get girls to do all the work <laughs> <laughs> So there you go. So whatever your excuses are, throw them out the window. You know, there's that, what is that, that Jim Rohn quote? He says, uh, I, I found all my, uh, if you, he said, I had all my excuses for why I wasn't successful. Um, and he said, uh, you know, so I, I found, he said, I found, I found them recently. And no, no, wait, what is that? How it goes? Anyway, but he said, you know, he found his list and, you know, when you make your list of reasons you're unsuccessful, throw it away <laughs> because it's, it's whatever it is. It's just made up bullshit that's keeping you from having what you really want. So there you go. All right. Hats off to Ototake-kun. All right. Um, how, how long? How, how, okay. We're, we're, we've got a good amount of yeah. stuff there. Okay, great. Well, um, that's going to be our show for today. Uh, thanks again for your questions. And um, we'll have more for you very soon because um, I've got lots more stuff to, uh, to talk about. There's several more questions we didn't get to and um, some other topics that we want to cover. So thank you very much for listening in. Yep. Thanks, guys. And see you next time. Bye-bye.